Hello and welcome to another scriptures for today from Nine Mile Falls Community Church. I want to introduce myself this way. I'm Pastor Heath, Pastor Jim Marish, Pastor Randy Anion. This morning, here. wanted to um, continue from our last scriptures for today. Colossians is where we're going to be heading toward this morning. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. So if you can get out your Bibles, your coffee, sit down. We're going to go through this today. Uh, you know, the scripture for today reminds me of a quite, uh, an idea. If we've ever been on a road trip together, or we've all been packed in the same vehicle for a, a long amount of time, and I think... Uh, this kind of highlights what, what happens when we are packed in these spaces for, for time. And so I want to uh, kind of go through that, this idea this morning and, and how we react. So let's start off, Colossians 3, 12. It says, Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, Bearing with one another, and if uh, one has a complaint against one another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. So there's a lot of words in there that kind of jump out to me, but what do you guys see and hear in this first part of the passage? Well, this, um, you know, the idea of a road trip is um, pretty apropos for this whole thing. And I'm thinking more, uh, it's been easier when we come together as a church to work that out, to forgive one another, to love one another. Sometimes it's easier to do it to strangers than it is to your whole family. And now we find ourselves with our family uh, all the time, and it seems to me, for me, it's been more difficult. Uh, it's been more of a challenge to be humble, gentle, kind when I'm with my family 24-7. Yeah, and Paul's writing to the church, and he writes to us today, you today, to let us know that if you are chosen by God, beloved by God, if you're a Christian, so if you're a Christ follower, then there's things that you have to, and we have already addressed in our last scripture for today, some things you take off or leave off or set aside, and then those things that you put on. He says this because we would naturally maybe not put these things on. And it's just like uh, if we were going on a trip, if we were being together, uh, then we would have to put something on or pack something or put something in the suitcase. Uh, these are things that uh, are considered necessities. We, we talked today about essential businesses. That's a, a buzzword that's going on during this virus. What's essential, what's not? Right. What's essential in the Christian world? And Paul's given us that list for those very things that are essential to us. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's it's interesting to see, you know, how do we react when those pressures come on us? You know, when, when things are going well, sun is shining, we can be pretty jovial, nice, kind, joyful, you know, but once it comes to those crunch times, what do we need to be putting on? And it's really I like that idea of putting it on and waking up in the morning, it's getting dressed and, and going through these things. Maybe it's, maybe we're writing a, a note card and sitting in front of our mirror and, and seeing patience and meekness, bearing one another. And if you have a complaint, like this, it, it doesn't say, go to that person and show them how right you are. It says, forgive one another through that, um, and that forgiveness. And it says, put on a heart up. This is inside of us, our soul, our spirit. It's not just this outward right. yeah. little demonstrations that we do from time to time, which is so common in our culture. Uh, this is kindness that we're showing to someone, not just because, well, I want to be noticed for showing kindness. Right. No, I'm, I, I'm changing my heart. I'm, my heart's being transformed. I am putting kindness. I'm allowing the Holy Spirit, actually, to put kindness within me so that I can demonstrate that to those around me. And like you said, Randy, uh, if I can't demonstrate this to my family, who I'm uh, during these times of stay-at-home orders from the state and the federal government, if I can't do it then, then I'm not going to do it out there. Right. Not consistently, and certainly not from the heart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, 
you know, in verse 14, it, it drops down and it says, And above all of these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Mm -hmm. what, do we, what do we take from that piece? Love is something that um, we need to show everyone, um, whether they're believers or not believers. And that just gives us the opportunity in these times when things get tough to be able to show that we have love because we have Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that we've produced on our own. It's been something that's given to us so that we can relate it to others. Mm -hmm. And that love, of course, as you know, if you've been in some of our other studies and uh, scripture groups that we have talked about, this kind of love, agape love from God, sacrificial love, other-centered love, um, and that is very difficult. We love ourselves, and we love what we do, right? We love our own families, uh, just by virtue of being in a family or being in a community. We love our church. We love the fellowship of the church. But is it sacrificial love, other-centered? And if I'm centered on you, or you, or your family, then that is bringing us together. That is unifying us. And that's what he's telling us to put on. That's one of those first things. In fact, he expresses that clearly in 1 Corinthians 13. Where he talks about what does that love look like? And you don't have to guess. Right. You can just go to 1 Corinthians 13 and read it. Right. And then just do that. Yeah. Yeah. We always talk about, you know, this idea of loving those that are difficult to love and loving in, in times that are difficult to love because it, what, it actually produces a different fruit in us when we, when we love in hard times, you know, and it, it takes a little bit more and it takes relying on, on Christ and we say, Lord, I, can't, I cannot love during this, at this point, it is hard. Mm -hmm. And he, he wants us, he wants to drive us to that kind of love. Because that's ultimately Good Friday, that's how he loved us, that mm -hmm. we didn't do anything to deserve that love. And, and, you know, we need to love others that way, and love our family that way too. Well, I think we have, uh, this is a perfect opportunity for you guys at home to be able to practice this love I mean, we're all quarantined, we're all supposed to stay home, but there, there is that opportunity to go out and shop. There is that opportunity to get and interact with people, even though there's a six-foot distance. To showing them that love, um, whether it be not taking every coffee bag off of the, the shelves, leaving some for others. Uh, I think people in this time, we've all heard the, uh, the things about people hoarding and that, but to be able to go out and show that we're willing to share what we have seen before us, mm. right? Not grabbing everything we can, making sure that there's stuff for everybody else that comes behind us. Right, yeah, yeah. And then it drops down and it says, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which uh, indeed you were called in one body and be thankful. Mm. Let the peace of Christ rule, have sovereignty. Be in control mm. of who you are. Peace is a, a gift, obviously, given to us through the Holy Spirit. It's one of the fruits. It is produced in us by the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, there's a lot of people who have no peace. And it says, let the peace. It means it's there. You just need to let it happen in, you, in your heart, mm. in your mind. And uh, that really is sometimes difficult for people to do, especially when they're dealing with fear and panic and, right. and dismay and all of those kinds of things. And we'll be talking about that even in the message this weekend mm. about how our spirits can be calmed right. by the presence of God, by the presence of Christ. And so yeah. we just let that rule. Mm -hmm. You know, Scripture talks about the peace that passes all understanding. Um, and that's something that I didn't understand for a long time, is what kind of peace was that? Um, it certainly wasn't a peace I could produce on my own. It had to come from the Holy Spirit. But I believe that, as, as Pastor has shared, if we don't have that peace in this situation now, um, we are going to be stressed beyond what we can bear. And Christ tells us that he will not do that to us. But we need to take the peace that he has to rest in it, to know that 
this whole ordeal that's going on was ordained by him, is overseen by him, and will, will in the end, produce the fruit that he wants to produce. Mm. And, and that peace, that peace is so important um, to be able to sit in while we're here. Mm. It kind of reminds me, as we shared earlier, as you shared, Pastor, you, I'm going on a road trip. <clears throat> what seat are you in? If you're the driver, then okay, you're making all the decisions for the vehicle. Right. What about if you're in the co-pilot seat or in the back seat? Are you peaceful with what the driver is doing? <laughs> or are you providing input? Hold it on. Are we providing input to Christ about the peace we have? Or how to drive this car? How to deal with this situation? Are we just sitting and enjoying the ride? Or are we trying to take the wheel ourselves from the back seat? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Reaching over. I like that. Uh, dropping down in verse 16. This is, I love this verse. I, being in worship, I, I go back to it often. And it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing, admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thank, thankfulness in your hearts to God. Let the word dwell. Let the word abide or dwell. Just like in verse 15. Look at the difference here in these two. Let the peace of Christ rule. And then 16, let the word of Christ dwell. Mm. Richly dwell, abide, live, remain. Set up house in us. And this is, uh, and we want to uh, remind folks, if you are reading through the New Testament chronologically, uh, we finished that, Lord willing, on Easter. If you're not quite finished, okay, get after it and finish that up. And that helps you as you put the word into your heart. That helps right here to dwell in us, give you wisdom, understanding, teaching, and admonishing us. And then we can do that through prayer, through song, through worship. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's a wonderful expression. Yeah. I think this gives us the, a great opportunity um, to be able to study the Word, to have time to sit and dwell on it and, and ruminate on it. Because sometimes I think we get into a position where we are placing all our trust on somebody teaching us the word. Mm -hmm. um, Bible studies are great, but unless you get into it yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to enlighten you on it, that is, um, there's the idea of now to me that I can sit and, and just read and just ask the person who wrote it what it means, what it means to me and how I can use it in my life. You know, this week, or you know, in the last couple of weeks, one of my favorite things is we've been leading worship, and so we've been putting out worship songs kind of online, but mm -hmm. what we do is we sit as a family, and we have the lyrics in front of us, and I'll record, uh, and to sing together, and just hearing those voices, we've got little ones that have no idea that, you know, the words, but they're just kind of singing along with what they can, and, and what a blessing it is, you know, to be... To encourage one another with with singing and, and praising God, and, mm -hmm. and you people can hear you from six foot away if you're singing out, you know, in the grocery stores and, and these things. And uh, what encouragement that can be. Well, we need to practice that too. Yeah. Wherever you're at, whatever you do, you can practice it at home, uh, in the doctor's office, uh, wherever you go, that you can practice giving praise. To God, whether it's if you don't have a singing voice, give him a voice of praise. I don't think there's such thing as a no singing voice. Yeah, I mean, everybody's got, everybody's got <laughs> No, I thought there was for years, but <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> but it is also with all thankfulness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So finishing it off here, it says, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Whatever you do. And so during this time of reflection and being safe uh, and uh, trying to avoid uh, the bug, then uh, whatever you do, do it for his glory. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. I think we should uh, just keep that in mind that when we are doing things, um, that when we think about Christ and what he did and doing it in his glory, that just helps us 
to do the right thing mm -hmm. instead of complaining and arguing and doing all the things that, that seem to be happening in this world. Um, his words here, do everything in word and deed in the name of the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. So, so on those those bumpy parts of the road trips, on those smooth sailing, those nice, you know, whatever we do, do it as unto the Lord. So I want to encourage us this week. I'm going to close this in prayer. Father, uh, we thank you, God, for uh, the love that you showed us first, uh, that while we weren't yet sinners, that you died for us. And so, God, help us to hold on to that, especially as we come out of uh, the Easter week, God, and uh, the sacrifices that were made. Help us, work through us, Lord, through these times. We love you and we thank you and praise your name. Amen. Amen. So thank you again for joining us. Make sure you can actually subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Uh, and, and so we can do that as well. So thank you guys. Blessings to our family. Thank you. God bless.